Hello everyone, welcome to this course on XR Data Cloud Service Patching using APIs. My name is Bal Sarma and I'm part of Oracle Cloud Infrastructure team. In this module, we'll discuss primarily on API provided by Oracle for facilitating patching. You might see OCI console providing the same patching facilities when it becomes available. Before I proceed further, let me take a pause here so that you can go through our safe harbor statement. The objectives of this lesson is basically to provide you information on patching facilities available in Exadata Cloud Service as of today. I will explain how a compute node or operating systems are patched, which is owned by customers. We will also discuss Oracle's responsibilities for patching the XRCS environment, uh, which includes DOM0, InfiniBand, switches, firmware, and storage cells, which are controlled by Oracle. We will also look at quarterly patch release schedule, where to look for information on them. Uh, I will explain recommended tool or API suggested by Oracle at the moment for all kind of patching operations and making sure you keep your XRCS environment up to date using Oracle provided cloud tooling and APIs, which will also include a patch prerequisite checks or applying a patch, rolling back a patch, etc. So we will also understand uh, uh, log files which uh, might help you with any kind of analysis uh, related to your patching activity. We will discuss best practices as well as some housekeeping items when you plan your patching. And finally, uh, I will discuss very familiar utility XR check, which you can use pre or post patching for a fair comparison of environment as well as best practices. So now let's uh, take a look at patching which is performed by Oracle. So all component apart DOM U in XR Cloud service is managed as well as passed by Oracle, which includes physical compute nodes, DOM0, network switches, power distribution unit, integrated light out management interfaces, and XR data storage server and soft software which are related to uh, storage servers. Oracle deploys these patches during the scheduled uh, maintenance window, which gets communicated to customers through cloud notification portal and that helps you plan uh, for the patching activity. If there are corresponding recommended updates for your compute nodes or virtual machines environments, then Oracle will provide notification about them. So there is no option to opt out for any updates. Uh, as you see, patching window basically accommodates the timing window for multiple XR data database system to be patched, as patching is automated in large part of the XR data start and end date within the patch window is indicated by lifecycle state of your DB system. So when patching starts, database system uh, will go into updating state and the lifecycle details uh, displays the underlying infrastructure of the database system is being updated. So once the update gets finished, the status of the DB system will turn into uh, again available status and their own pin in lifecycle information at that point. The lifecycle state of a database system can be checked in console or if you are using OCI command line utilities like OCI CLI or REST API or SDK, uh, you can list it with uh, DB system uh, related commands like OCI DB system get and DB system ID with OC of the database system and you would be able to uh, see like if uh, the database is under maintenance or it's already done. If customer interaction is required, the lifecycle details will indicate that as well. So uh, one thing to uh, consider here is the approximate timing for patching a quarter rack is roughly five hours and uh, for a half rack, it might go for 10 hours. So you can also see uh, there are several uh, documents published by Oracle and uh, the most note which uh, specifically talks about uh, Oracle Database Cloud Accelerator service supported software version and planning for updates. So doc ID 2124174.1 uh, has more details about uh, these activities. So what happens during the course of patching, Xareta compute node will be updated in a rolling fashion. Uh, one node will be shut down, it will be patched and brought back online again. So after we ensure that the cluster stack is up and running, the next Xareta compute node will go through the same steps uh, while one node is being patched, the other nodes of your XR Data Cloud service can continue to update. 
So Oracle currently expects that the databases will remain available during this time window. Uh, Oracle, however, does not verify that all database service and pluggable databases are available after the node is brought back online, as it might depend on the application service definition you might have in your environment. So Oracle recommends uh, to follow the Oracle documentation, which talks about workload management as well as maximum availability architecture best practices for application so that you can reduce the outage for any application to being a minor service degradation due to uh, connection loss to the node being patched. So the links uh, which is uh, given over here, uh, Oracle Database Cloud Exadata Service supported software version as well as uh, there is a documentation on workload management as well as client failover best practices for highly available Oracle database. So these notes uh, will help you uh, plan uh, for the patching activities. And for any application which is not following the best practices, the rolling patch operation could mean an increased outage. So please uh, ensure you are not doing any major maintenance operation during the patching window as these uh, might get impacted by the rolling patch mechanism. So once some maintenance is completed, Xarata storage server and the Xarata compute nodes will be running with the latest version and that provides you access to the new uh, service features which is available on Xarata cloud service. So Oracle provides a quarterly patch release for Exadata Cloud Service customers and uh, this slide is showing few uh, MOS nodes which are available uh, for you to refer and uh, it will be very handy when uh, you are planning for any patching activity. So for Exadata Cloud Service, the quarterly patch contains uh, bundle patches and a set of one-off patches. So let's try to understand how Oracle delivers the bundle patches to Exadata Cloud customer. So there are basically two ways. Uh, one is for existing uh, provision system. It is delivered via patches and for any new provisioning system, images are available which can be selected during provisioning. So a few of the key uh, points uh, to remember here is that uh, cloud tooling updates are cumulative. So you should update them to the latest cloud tooling before you try any kind of patching or upgrade activity. And we will also see how uh, with a simple configuration we can keep our cloud tooling up to date uh, on exadata cloud services and just another point to remember is like all exadata database nodes should have the same uh, version of cloud so uh, all the new environments uh, which are provisioned uh, as of today have 19c compatibility and uh, you need to patch the operating system of exadata cloud service after any oracle scheduled maintenance is complete right uh, that way you'd be able to ensure you have the latest security fixes and uh, the link uh, here talks about how to uh, basically uh, update your cloud tooling as well as a few MOS nodes uh, which talks about how to update the Exadata system software to 19c on the Exadata cloud service in oracle cloud infrastructure so why we uh, update this uh, to the latest version uh, there are several reasons for updating the compute nodes uh, because the latest images are going to bring it to uh, Oracle Linux 7 and that supports uh, different uh, kind of uh, components within Exadata like sales or bare metals or DOM0, uh, DOMU, DB nodes. So there are support, there are several supports uh, related to uh, images as well as uh, updating the hardware. Uh, it supports you rolling upgrades. Uh, you can get the latest features uh, or the kernel features uh, with the uh, Oracle Linux 7. And there are several reasons like uh, you will uh, see that there is difference with the systemd command like which is basically replacing the older system v or init uh, kind of uh, environment. And that d is designed to overcome the shortcoming of init. So that is a process which is designed to start processes in parallel. So that way it reduces the boot uh, time in the environment as well as any kind of computational overheads. So it has a lot other features uh, than this. So one of the important thing you will notice crony, which is a different implementation of the network time protocol. So that uh, NTPD, uh, which was available with the uh, older version of Oracle Linux, the difference here is like it would be able to synchronize the system clock uh, much faster and with better accuracy than NTPD. 
Uh, some of the other aspects of using Oracle Linux 7 uh, could be like it enables advanced uh, intrusion detection environment that is known as AID and that helps to track down which file has been affected in case of system bus compromise. So it runs a daily cron job and that monitors the system for any changes to the file, uh, the system or as well as their specific directories and uh, AID automatically raises critical software alerts. Uh, so that way uh, it provides uh, better security. So now we'll talk about uh, the patching facilities which is available in Exadata Cloud Service. And uh, Exadata Cloud Service provides a uh, uniform API for patching the databases, the tools as well as uh, uh, compute nodes operating system which we discussed earlier. And uh, these facilities are provided by Dbus CLI utility. Customers are uh, basically responsible for managing patches and updates to the Oracle database and grid infrastructure software on the compute node in addition to any OS patches. So Diva CLI simplifies the patching operation. And Oracle recommends to use uh, only Diva CLI for any operation instead of uh, XRDBC patch. Uh, so some of the operations which are supported on Exadata Cloud Services, like first thing is to self patch of cloud tooling. So this tool of what we are discussing Diva CLI uh, with certain command or configurations, it would be able to update itself with any latest uh, uh, version of the patching available and that is important uh, because not only for patching but uh, also for backups uh, if you are especially using APIs uh, these cloud toolings uh, plays a big role and uh, that is one way Oracle is able to bring more and more uh, support in terms of APIs or functionality on the cloud. So another thing you would be able to list out any available patches for your database and grid infrastructure homes and uh, you can check the prerequisites before applying a patch. Uh, you can apply a patch using Diva CLI and uh, you can, would be able to also list the applied patches. Uh, Diva CLI also uh, supports uh, rolling back a patch in case of like it is failed by any reason. Uh, some of the uh, Patches like uh, for daylight saving time as well as any non-routine patching might require manual steps which can be worked with uh, opening of a support ticket uh, with Oracle support services. So with that I will move to uh, Dbus CLI and we will try to understand more uh, what could be the input as well as what output you can expect uh, while using uh, this API utility. So inputs for database patching uh, will include the patch ID or uh, latest for uh, prerequisites. Uh, it can include apply or rollback operation. Uh, database name as an input, which could be one or more databases, uh, which you are going to use with the device CLI. For patching all the databases, you can provide a parameter all DBS, uh, instance name in the format of host name, colon oracle underscore home. Uh, so inputs for tool patching on the other side like you can either specify patch id which indicates the rpm version to upgrade or latest and we have discussed uh, uh, that uh, you would be able to update the cloud tooling with a certain configuration which we will see uh, in next few slides uh, like how uh, we can do that uh, so diva cli operations output will be for databases it will list all the available database patches uh, which is available for upgrade or patch prerequisites or apply or rollback completed successfully or not. So this could be the outcome when you perform uh, activities using Diva CLI. So if by any reason some uh, of the steps are not completed successfully, it will return you the error message uh, about that step. And uh, also there will be corresponding uh, log file, uh, which we will see when we go into the uh, details or examples later. So for tool patching, it uh, lists all the tools patches available for upgrade and uh, also apply completion status when you apply them using uh, this CLI. So now talk about the uh, Diva CLI uses for patching and uh, uh, it uh, as well as for tool patching like uh, list or pre-check as well as apply. So for tools patching, uh, if you want to update the cloud tooling, the commands would be uh, Diva CLI patch tool list, which will basically uh, list uh, any uh, upgrades available for your uh, 
uh, cloud tooling. Uh, you can use Diva CLI patch tools, apply and uh, provide the patch ID uh, as well as like if you want to update it with the latest uh, as an argument. Uh, if you want to apply, like you can just provide patch ID with the patch ID name. So uh, that way you can uh, apply the specific patch version you want uh, on your system. The another command like which uh, uh, basically provides uh, enabling the auto update of your cloud tooling is Diva CLI patch tools auto enable. So if you do this on your uh, XRCS nodes, uh, automatically as and when uh, there is a new version of cloud tooling, the system will update it and uh, there will be a configuration related information or scheduling information uh, on the compute node and uh, all the uh, updates will be taken care with this command. So when it comes to database patch list, uh, you can use Diva CLI patch DB list and then you need to pass the Oracle home and that will be in format of uh, host name colon the uh, database home associated for which uh, you want to list the patches. Uh, it again uh, provides uh, prerequisite checks. So you can use the Diva CLI patch DB prereq uh, hyphen hyphen patch ID and uh, patch ID will be uh, given here. Uh, this patch ID will come from the list command anyways. So uh, you will pass one of that uh, which you are interested in applying or basically checking like if uh, patches can be applied uh, successfully or not. Then you need to pass the instance uh, information using a hyphen hyphen instance one and it will take again the hostname colon oracle home for that particular instance. So you can combine uh, if you want to do this uh, activities on multiple nodes you can pass like uh, another instance instance 2 and provided by hostname colon oracle home. Uh, you can also use just db names for your prerequisite stake uh, provide with the db name for which you want uh, patches to be listed or check. Uh, if you want to do uh, patching for all of the databases and want to do the prerequisite check. Uh, you can simply provide hyphen hyphen all dbs and that will take care of uh, uh, listing the prerequisites for uh, all of those databases. So same way like you can use uh, db names and uh, you can give for a specific databases uh, to check like if uh, prerequisites are successful or not. So when it comes to database patch apply uh, again like you are going to uh, provide the patch ID with the command and uh, the instance information in form of hostname colon uh, home details uh, as well as you can pass database names and uh, also you can specify like from which uh, node the data SQL will be ra run as part of the patching uh, process. So Diva CLI patch DB apply patch ID and then uh, here I am specifying like uh, multiple databases and I want to run data SQL from node 1. So it depends uh, which node uh, is going to run the data SQL uh, as part of the patch apply process. Uh, similarly you can use uh, Diva CLI patch DB apply with the uh, patch ID and uh, just the database names or uh, all dbs or a specific database names so it depends on uh, how you want to carry out this activity and accordingly you need to provide the uh, command so now we'll uh, take a look at uh, how rollbacks are supported using diva cli uh, so the command uses uh, term switchback so switchback is basically another name uh, on xrcs for rollback operations uh, so that you have to keep in mind. So syntax is going to be Diva CLI patch DB switch back. Uh, you will specify which patch you want to uh, roll back here. Uh, patch ID as well as from which instances or the database names. So again like uh, as part of the rollback operation it needs to run the data SQL. You will specify which node is going to execute uh, that. So Diva CLI patch uh, DB switch back uh, with patch ID uh, again like uh, you need to specify the patch ID as well as the database names. So for a specific database or for all databases or just selective databases. So this command is very much flexible and uh, you can use the way uh, you want to. Uh, in case like uh, you don't know uh, or you can't remember these like you don't have to uh, 
the command help provides you details about any activities uh, with these like diva cli patch db hyphen hyphen help will display you all the help available about the activities which can be performed using diva cli or similarly if you are dealing with uh, tools update again uh, pass help uh, subcommand and it will display you uh, the respective help uh, for the environment so one of the node is like uh, you don't have to use root for uh, doing this one you can very well use sudo uh, from opc user uh, and uh, perform the patching for both gi as well as uh, rdbms uh, uh, forms so now we'll uh, take a look at uh, how we update the cloud tooling on Exadata cloud service so cloud tooling includes the fixes for existing issues as well as new features and that is the reason it is highly recommended to upgrade the cloud tooling once a new version or release is available so this is important before trying patching using diva cli and when you update the cloud tooling on database deployment uh, hosting a data guard configuration you must perform the update on both the nodes so that is on the one hosting the primary database and on the one that is hosting your standby database so a few of the examples here like checking your current version of cloud tooling you can uh, log in to your uh, compute node and you can execute R rpm hyphen qa grep uh, hyphen id bus tool so that will come up with uh, which version is uh, currently installed and if you want to check uh, like what updates are available simply use diva cli patch tools list and uh, this will tell you like which uh, patches are available for your environment then in order to upgrade to the latest cloud tooling you can use the syntax diva cli patch tools apply and provide the patch id uh, with either patch id or with the latest as keyword and latest will uh, make sure you get the latest cloud tooling uh, upgraded in your uh, environment and this is useful uh, especially by any region if you are not able to uh, update it to the latest you can take an incremental step and uh, go there but uh, you can try with the latest keyword and if you are on a cert certain specific release you would be able to uh, basically update the cloud tooling Another uh, thing we discussed about uh, configuring the automatic cloud tooling updates and commands are really simple. You have to use diva CLI patch tools auto enable. So do this activity on all of the compute nodes on XRCS. So for a quarter rack, you have two compute nodes. Uh, you will execute this command on both of them so that uh, cloud tooling uh, uh, will be uh, enabled for auto update. If you want to uh, disable uh, in this cloud tooling update uh, auto update you can do it using uh, auto disable uh, uh, with diva cli uh, patch tools so that will disable the cloud tooling update so one thing you have to uh, uh, keep in mind is like you will have to repeat the same step on another instance uh, or if like you have a data guard setup uh, so for diva cli cloud tooling upgrade uh, will be uh, repeated on all of the nodes uh, uh, the same thing is documented under uh, moss doc id 2350471.1 and uh, you can take a look at this uh, doc how to upgrade diva cloud tooling using diva cli so what happens uh, when uh, you specify this command like uh, there are uh, several uh, things getting done so when you issue this command uh, it will create a kind of uh, cron tab entry uh, especially if you are doing a, a cloud tooling update uh, uh, for auto enablement so it will create a entry in cron tab and uh, you can open up using uh, any compute node just do a sudo cat slash etc slash cron tab and you will definitely see there an entry uh, which will uh, say that like rpm update uh, hyphen execute so that is uh, going to take care of this cloud tooling update so you will see this uh, extra entry created uh, if you issue this uh, particular command now we'll take a look at uh, steps to apply the rdbms patches uh, so first thing is list and uh, to list the available patch identifiers for an oracle home directory uh, you can use sudo diva cli patch dblist 
hyphen hyphen oh oh is for vertical home and then you have to provide the uh, compute name colon uh, oracle home for which you want to list the patches so in this example uh, it is saying that like your debug cli version is 182310 uh, depending on your cloud tooling version this might change and uh, it will execute the patch db list uh, for the arguments you have provided and uh, then in it might take few minutes and it will come up with all the available patches uh, and in my example it is showing that i have a, a july 2018 patch as well as like october patch and jan patch as well as april patch so i have intentionally kept it uh, uh, like this i have not updated it but uh, now in the next examples i am going to use the same uh, to apply as well as do a rollback and show you um, how these things are carried out so uh, you can install the database patch using uh, diva cli patch db apply uh, patch id and you can pick uh, from the available patches for your environment so in my case i'm going to select uh, this particular patch id and uh, this would be able to uh, uh, patch the environment so these information comes up from the command output of list it uh, just gives you a heads up that uh, these are the available patches and if you want to apply one of them like this is the syntax you are going to use and only argument you will be passing is db names and you can specify for which databases you want this patch to be applied and we have seen in a previous uh, slide that what are possible uh, commands available uh, for using this cli for installing the database patch we are going to look into next slide for more details so once like you have done a, a listing of patches available for your uh, compute nodes uh, next task is to check the prerequisites uh, before applying a patch and uh, you will be using pcheck uh, as an argument uh, so it, it checks for patch readiness on a specific instances and I have picked up an example uh, here you can use sudo diva cli uh, patch db prereq and then patch id and the patch for which I want to uh, basically do the pcheck and I am passing my uh, instance information here like compute node colon uh, oracle home so it might take time so uh, it is a better idea like you, you can use a no hub or with uh, person uh, so that uh, your command will be not uh, timed out but uh, I see that like it should be uh, a kind of synchronous uh, so even though uh, if the terminal is not available you would be able to see the log uh, which will be generated as part of this uh, command execution so uh, it is saying executing command patch db predict and uh, then it also creates uh, a kind of log file uh, within var opt oracle log directory uh, and uh, at the end it is going to tell you like if prerequisites checks are completed successfully or if you are ready to apply the patch so alternatively you can use uh, the same command for a specific database here here i have used the instance information with the host name and the database home and in the second example i'm showing you that you can use uh, hyphen hyphen db names and you can specify the database for which you want to do the prereq uh, check so when it uh, comes to applying the patch uh, after prerequisites uh, check is done and uh, it says that uh, it was successful uh, you can uh, take any specific uh, node and uh, by using sudo you will be able to uh, do the patch apply uh, for your environment so in this example uh, i'm using sudo diva cli patch db apply uh, for the same patch id and i'm specifying a database which is existing in uh, uh, on my xrcs environment so that is one way like it will uh, take time definitely it it might take time uh, and it does in a rolling fashion so you don't have to worry about uh, your uh, application availability which we already discussed some of the best practices earlier but uh, it will start the patching and uh, the logs will be generated again uh, inside xrdbc patch.log uh, on under var opt oracle directory 
So on successful completion, uh, you should see uh, XRDBC patch completed successfully. So some sort of message which will tell you that patching was successful. And uh, you can uh, also do a query from your uh, sys dot registry dollar history uh, to check out like if uh, the patches are applied or not. So in my example, I'm just using select two care of uh, X and time and setting up the time format uh, as X and time and X and namespace. Uh, I'm looking for bundle underscore series uh, from uh, the registry history view and uh, it says the on 2nd May like I have JVM patch uh, which was applied as well as RDBMS uh, 121020 uh, uh, patches uh, was applied. So that confirms that uh, patching was successful. Uh, another thing to note here is the JVM patches are also automated means you don't have to uh, do this uh, JVM patching uh, separately. It's no more uh, uh, required to be done manually and uh, bundle patches are taken care of uh, Java virtual machines patches as well. So now take a look at uh, rollback. Uh, so, so far we have uh, listed the patches for environment. Uh, we did a prereq check uh, for uh, my uh, CS uh, databases. Then like we picked up uh, an example on how to patch it. And uh, if by any reason you want to rollback, uh, the commands are going to be uh, similar to this, like sudo diva cli patch db switchback. As I said uh, initially that uh, rollback is renamed as uh, switchback uh, in this uh, CLI and you will specify the patch ID and uh, then database names for which you want to roll back the patches. So it, it says executing command patch db switchback and uh, then it, it will definitely take time and uh, all the logs will be uh, uh, written under xrdbc patch.log file. So the way uh, this CLI is doing it, like uh, it goes in any environment when you are starting a patching or rollback, like it does on one of the node and then it will move to another node and then it has ability to run the data SQL uh, from the node you specify, otherwise it will pick up uh, uh, one of the node. So this is the way you are able to roll back the patches. So another way to uh, list any applied patches, uh, you can produce a list of applied patches to determine which patches have been applied and uh, you can also use opatch utility to determine the patches that have been applied to an Oracle database or grid infrastructure installation. So we are using opatch utility just to list out the patches which is a very familiar tool uh, which we use in uh, any database uh, environment. So, uh, in order to produce a list of uh, applied patches for an Oracle database installation, you can connect to a compute node, uh, you can set the Oracle home uh, variable to the location of database installation uh, you want to examine. Uh, so in this example, I'm just exporting the Oracle home path here and then uh, I execute the opatch command with the ls patches option. So just a quick note, uh, you don't have to basically uh, set this environment and all like especially on XRCS environment, uh, we create a source file which will be available under uh, Oracle home, which uh, you can use to source the environment variable. Uh, so with respect to any databases, you will see that source file uh, with the database name uh, available under Oracle home directory, which you can uh, simply set by using source and the file name and that will set the environment for you. So in order to produce a list of applied patch for your Oracle grid infrastructure, again, you can uh, log into grid user or uh, then you can set the environment variables and the uh, opatch ls patches is going to list out all the uh, patches which are applied on your grid home. So now uh, uh, let's talk about the log file analysis for patching issues. So uh, this uh, information like which I'm uh, talking now uh, it is good to know uh, that where these uh, patch logs are written like where opt oracle log uh, will have uh, uh, most of the information for xr data nodes like xrdbc patch multi or xrdbc patch sm as well as xrdbc patch so these are all under where opt oracle log so these are some of the location which uh, you want to take a look at and uh, another note here is like each node will have XRDBC patch log. Uh, XRDBC patch multi log will be only on one node uh, from where we start.
Now we'll talk about uh, in case you have a data guard uh, environment with your XRCS. So in those situations, you can take advantage of data guard patching before primary instances. So in this example scenario, I'm talking about I have a primary instance uh, L1 and a standby instance L2. And uh, just considering each of these instances uh, have two nodes, means L11, L12, as well as L12, L21, and L22. So tool is intelligent. It will apply the patches on uh, L21, and then on L22, then L12, and then on L11. And then finally, it will run the data patch on the very first node. So task of uh, XRDBC patch multi, uh, which supports uh, a DBA CLI, is uh, going to look at uh, basically uh, which node is active or inactive node and uh, it will find out which one is primary or standby they will find out the number of nodes uh, and their names as well as the last node where it is going to run the data sql so it will also find the standby node name as well as prime primary node name now we'll talk about some of the patching best practices we have uh, seen how diva cli is able to uh, provide uh, patching uh, scenarios like listing, break, sit, check, uh, applying the patch or rollback operations, uh, they go very seamlessly uh, with uh, minimal user intervention, you will be able to patch your system. Uh, but it is always a good idea uh, to uh, look at some of the best practices. So XR check, for example, like you should be running XR check uh, before doing any major uh, patching or uh, any upgrades uh, and commands to run is simple hyphen local only hyphen uh, db uh, all or you need to specify the output file uh, location. Uh, you can also additionally take a look at uh, uh, cluster verify utility and uh, cluster verify utility captures all output uh, to individual files and uh, as a grid user, you can uh, use this one as CRS inst hyphen and all verbose or if you want to take information on SCFS, uh, uh, you can use SCFS uh, CFG uh, with verbose options. Uh, you can uh, also execute like all the components um, information using this uh, grid user as well as from Oracle users, uh, you can run uh, these commands and uh, keep the output with you because that helps you. Uh, figure it out like in case uh, if anything goes wrong or like even before applying the patches you will exactly know user equivalence is uh, running fine or all the cluster resources uh, are doing good in the environment uh, additionally you can also check for spaces on all the file systems keep a note of it uh, services status using a service ctl commands uh, yeah, you can uh, keep a note of that. You can additionally collect all the ETC ORA tab entries, even though like uh, Diva CLI is not going to use that file uh, for facilitating patching, but it is a good idea to uh, keep a note of what entries are there in ORA tab. So you will have to make sure uh, for a given Oracle home, uh, there should be only one entry per home, which points to the database name in the ETC ORA tab. Uh, databases are assigned to the correct DB homes or there are no instance specific entries. The ORATEP files on all nodes are consistent. So these are few of the housekeeping uh, things uh, which helps uh, within the environment. Uh, additionally, you can also run DBAS uh, direct tool on both of the nodes as root. And uh, if you want to do that, like uh, this is specific node 2219712.1 uh, talks about uh, uh, this particular direct collection. Uh, how it has to be done so make sure you uh, pass uh, an argument to get uh, tfl logs to true uh, that way you will have more uh, information uh, or diagnostic collection for your uh, xrcs environment uh, you can also additionally list the divas cfs directory on both the nodes uh, just keep a note of it uh, before uh, proceeding with the patching divas tools rpm should be updated to the latest on both the nodes uh, we have uh, briefly discussed about how to uh, enable this patching uh, means uh, before uh, attempting patch like this cloud tooling has to be updated or if you have already taken care of uh, via uh, self-update uh, using divas cli patch tools auto enable uh, that will take care of uh, making sure like you have always the latest version of cloud tooling uh, you 
you should be also like verifying the central inventories as well as node inventories uh, are consistent across all the nodes uh, inventory xml on both nodes is consistent so there are no homes deleted or created outside of the inventory or uh, all existing homes uh, in the inventory should be created from tooling uh, make sure all existing oracle home are not moved or relocated using attach home or detach home options uh, uh, this is uh, just going to provide you uh, some more uh, help like in case uh, you are stuck with any situation so you should also verify all the files needed for patching or relinking are intact on both the nodes so by default like no one changes these files but uh, uh, just a best practice uh, there is a most note which uh, talks about these uh, verifying the central inventory and node inventories are consistent across all nodes like o patch ls patches shows the same patch list on all the nodes uh, before you uh, try patching activity now we'll talk about exa check utility and uh, this tool is basically used uh, on all of the exa data environments whether it's on prem systems or uh, on cloud uh, it helps you monitor the health of the system uh, it is used to identify the findings and that needs an attention for database server a storage server as well as infiniband switch uh, it does uh, check for grid infrastructure database asm operating system software checks uh, it also provides with the maximum availability ar architecture scoreboard uh, which conducts an automatic uh, ma review uh, it helps with Exadata software planner, uh, software pre-checks, Exadata and database critical issue alerts. Uh, all of the things like which is uh, part of Exacheck are mostly self-explanatory. Uh, uh, it provides all the recommendations as well as manual verifications uh, commands so that customers can self-correct uh, all fail and warning conditions which are reported through it. Uh, so development recommends that latest Exacheck be executed uh, with uh, like monthly or weekly before any plan maintenance activity or day before any plan maintenance activity or you are completing a major uh, uh, plan maintenance so uh, they are immediately you can run it or in case of an outage or incident uh, situations so in order to uh, get this uh, extra check uh, you can uh, download the patch uh, which is mentioned here uh, there is a moss note which uh, talks about uh, details on uh, how to do xr check uh, or basically health check on xr data systems so doc id 10709541 uh, talks more in detail on usage of xr uh, check utility so now we'll move to uh, the demo uh, i will uh, show you basically how to use this cloud tooling update uh, how to patch using diva cli uh, as well as like uh, listing applying a patch or rolling back patches so i will take you through my environment and uh, we will try to execute these commands which we have uh, discussed uh, in the session so let's get into the demo to start uh, we will first look at how to update the cloud tooling because that was the first step when we started uh, our uh, discussion around like how to proceed with the uh, patching and even uh, before doing any kind of patching operations uh, we highly recommend that to update the cloud tooling uh, so let's check out how uh, we can check like which uh, tool is available on our environment and for doing that like i'm uh, i've just logged into my uh, xrata node uh, using opc user and as we discussed we can always use sudo uh, to uh, do any administrative task on uh, XRCS environment. So sudo rpm hyphen qa grab hyphen i. So this is the command which should uh, tell you which a specific version of uh, cloud tooling is uh, installed on the XRCS node. And uh, here it displays the uh, divas tools version uh, available on my platform uh, next we are going to check if there are any updates available for cloud tooling and for uh, getting that one uh, you need to run the patch tools list command and it checks uh, uh, against the version which you already installed and if there are any uh, new version of cloud tooling is available 
uh, it would be able to provide the details uh, for the environment. So here we see like it is checking uh, the tool on all the nodes. Uh, current patch ID which is available is uh, 19.04.15 uh, and it found that there is another version uh, which is available which is the latest version uh, and uh, I can install it using Diva CLI patch tools apply. Uh, then I need to provide the patch ID or the latest uh, as an argument. So that way uh, both the nodes will have the same tool version. So here we found uh, that we have a update available uh, for cloud tooling. So next thing I'm going to do is I will uh, update this cloud tooling. And for doing that, I can use uh, again sudo diva cli patch tools apply patch id latest so this syntax is going to make sure uh, it will install the latest patch set uh, which is available for cloud tooling in my environment so it might take a few seconds and uh, then it will come up with uh, uh, a successful message that it has uh, updated the uh, cloud tooling to the latest version So here we see that uh, the patching operation has already up, uh, updated the first node and it displays the current tool version of uh, uh, xdprod n53gg1 is uh, set to 19.04.15 and patch id which it is going to do is the latest and uh, it has updated uh, the dbus tools rpm to uh, latest version. And now the second uh, node of my XRCS has again the same version uh, 19.04.15 and uh, it is trying to apply the latest patch. So here we see that uh, it has updated the second node also and uh, then it is confirming the latest version uh, over here. So when you run this command it took uh, uh, maybe some time like it takes roughly uh, 5 minutes roughly and uh, you will see in the prompt will come and confirm the uh, version so we can again check it uh, the tool version and it should confirm that uh, the latest cloud tooling is available for the platform so now uh, take a look at uh, how uh, we can do uh, auto enable for the cloud tooling uh, and before like enabling it for uh, auto uh, upgrade uh, I want to check like uh, uh, what is the current status of my cloud tooling so you can write a command sudo dbus cli so the command uh, sudo dbus cli patch tools auto status uh, it should display like if I have already enabled uh, auto update in my environment or if it is not enabled. So in this case, uh, it is looking for the file uh, RPM UPD status and uh, it says that auto RPM update is disabled. So in order to uh, make it uh, auto update, uh, we, will, we can run certain commands and the command would be sudo dbus cli. So in order to uh, enable auto update for Diva CLI, so that next time you will not have to do it manually, you can issue command sudo Diva CLI patch tools auto enable. And uh, if you look at the log, uh, it has run RPM EPD enable and uh, it, says, it says that it is enabled auto RPM updates and it has also added a cron tab entry for future updates. Uh, and this is done on all of the nodes. So this way we have enabled our uh, cloud tooling update and we don't have to worry about uh, doing it manually next time. So we can confirm this with uh, again the same command auto status and uh, it should say that uh, the auto RPM update is enabled. If you want to uh, disable it 
uh, the commands are again going to be uh, similar so just only keyword is going to change this like auto disable and uh, auto disable commands disables the auto update of cloud tooling on your environment so for simplicity i'm going to just uh, enable it and uh, it is going to help me for uh, future updates so one way to uh, check like what it has done in the cron tab you can open up your uh, etc cron tab file and you should be able to see this particular line so it confirms that uh, auto update is already enabled and if you disable this entry goes uh, and you will have to always update the cloud tooling manually so future updates so one way to uh, check like what it has done in the cron tab you can open up your uh, etc cron tab file and you should be able to see this particular line so it confirms that uh, auto update is already enabled and if you disable this entry goes uh, and you will have to always update the cloud tooling manually so now uh, let's uh, start with the uh, patching activity and uh, for doing that i will uh, use again the opc user and the first thing what i'm going to do is to uh, validate what uh, database homes I have in my environment and uh, databases running and we will execute uh, those commands like uh, list or do prerequisites check as well as apply and rollbacks. So we will see them uh, one by one. So just quickly checking uh, which databases I have in uh, my XRCS environment. Uh, I, I have few databases which is listed out uh, here and uh, I will also take a look at my etc ORA tab file. Uh, I have four database homes also available because the inputs for uh, Diva CLI for any patching operation of either grid infrastructure software or RDBMS home is uh, basically uh, Oracle homes as well as database names uh, so you should have these entries uh, available uh, so that you can check and perform uh, the commands for rest of the uh, exercise what I'm going to do is to take you through uh, some of previously executed commands since these patching uh, are time consuming and uh, the steps are very much straightforward you have to uh, just know how uh, you can execute these various activities so i'm taking you to my uh, previously executed command just to give you a uh, feel of uh, how these commands are executed diva cli has the uh, ability to basically manage uh, all the life cycle of our database operation so for running that one you will log in to your uh, node uh, in my case i have logged into my uh, first compute node and i have executed the command diva cli so it shows me that diva cli version is 18.2310 and then you can use commands like patch db list hyphen hyphen oh and then the host name and the database form so i have several uh, database homes available in uh, my environment like you see here i have bms prod i have a database home i have another database home here uh, 1210 database home so these are all different homes so you can specify for the database where you are planning for this patching so once you uh, specify this command it will uh, run it it shows that uh, xrcs patching and it, it has checked the inventory and found few available patches so in my case it is returning patch id uh, 279680010 which is nothing but database 1210180717 uh, database patch for database and in memory so nothing but july 2018 patch again like it found like another patch is available which is october 2018 and then uh, another one for jan 29 2019 and the last one is for april 2019 so obviously like it is a decision which one you want to uh, do all the patches are cumulative so probably you want to go with the uh, latest one right uh, april 2019 patch and this command also provide you uh, basically the option uh, to use 
uh, it says install database patch using diva cli patch db apply with the patch id and this is one of the example like 2796 uh, uh, this is the first patch right 27968010 so you can specify the patch id uh, any patch like whatever you have decided to apply for right so that's uh, 2019 jan or uh, april patch uh, so uh, this provides just an information and you need to also pass the database name along with it right so hyphen hyphen db names and uh, provide the database name from the list so in my case i have bms fraud uh, which is running on both the cluster uh, um, probably i want to provide that so next command i am showing you that uh, you can do a prerequisite before attempting the patch and for doing that i have a specified patch db prereq and with the patch id uh, this is the patch id which i want to validate if uh, i can uh, successfully apply and with the database name as bms fraud so this command takes a little time uh, it will get executed it will do all the checks for the database name which you have uh, specified here and uh, you can track this one um, basically there is a log file which will tell you the progress of that so in this case where, where opt oracle log xrdbc patch and patch.log will show you all the details which is going behind the scene otherwise like you need to uh, do several checks right uh, to validate if we are able to uh, pass the environment and if everything looks good then it will tell you the prerequisite check is completed successfully and you are ready to apply the patch so let me show you like how these logs uh, look like uh, let me increase the font a bit So it goes through several checks here. Uh, when I issue the command uh, of pre-check, uh, it is not only just telling you by uh, looking into the system, it basically downloads the patch, right? It will check for like if the O patch is current or not. And then like it downloads the uh, related patch, O patch as well as the actual patch on the system. So this is the command output, right? Uh, so it goes through all of these checks. So it checks for database, all the PDBs within the database. Uh, it will check for the component status of the database. Uh, then several other commands, how much space is available and all of that from uh, grid home it will identify uh, using OLS nodes, which one is your first node. Uh, so just to give you a view like uh, a different uh, patches which is uh, needed for uh, for the environment it will download them it will extract it and then uh, using o patch utility it will validate so this is what it is doing like it has upgraded even the o patch and as i said like uh, it uh, uses the scfs mount point right so it created a file with respect to each the database form which we are going to pass uh, for your pre-check or apply kind of operation so it downloaded this patch which is nothing but o patch and then uh, it extracted it uh, then like uh, after ex extraction of that like it uh, uh, also downloaded the patch uh, from this one like this is my object storage uh, from where like it got the patch 2883531 so this patch is coming from object storage within the oracle cloud infrastructure it was able to uh, download this patch by uh, roughly 45 MB. It got downloaded here uh, under SCFS directory. And uh, then it has like extracted it. Uh, and uh, then like it does all of the uh, apply related. So the idea uh, of this one is to, it does all of the prerequisite checks. Uh, it will confirm that the check is uh, passed or fail and uh, then it gives you a confidence before you uh, apply that patch so you should be looking at uh, xrdbc patch completed successfully masses and then uh, uh, like if everything looks good like you can go ahead and apply the patch so in this example i have i've just validated my other patch also and uh, it did the check and said that you are ready to apply the patch 
So if you want to go ahead with uh, uh, doing the patch, the commands are already here. Patch db apply. You specify the patch ID, patch ID name, and then uh, you can pass the database names uh, to it. So that will be uh, uh, taking uh, some time, and uh, I just wanted to uh, show you like how easy it is to get this done from here. Now we will see how to roll back a patches uh, which is already applied on the system. Uh, just to list out, like I have few databases here, and uh, on one of the database uh, BMS broad, I have already applied uh, a, a patch. So I'm going to uh, roll it back, uh, and I will show you how to use dbus cli command to roll back a patch. For rolling back a patch, uh, I will be using dbus cli patch db switch back command. Uh, this command might take some time and uh, we would be able to track the progress in xrdbc patch.log uh, about how it progresses. In this example, I am uh, showing you how to do a rollback of already applied path. So the syntax uses switchback as an argument and you need to provide the patch ID uh, which is uh, already applied and you want to uh, roll back. So I see that uh, it shows the DBMS CLI version and then um, it takes some time and at the end it should be able to tell you whether switchback was successful or not. And the same thing can be verified uh, in var opt oracle log xrdbc patch um, and this is already showing that uh, rollback is already allowed here it is continuing with that uh, it got the information about the database and uh, it also noticed that psu uh, is already there on that and uh, the current psu which was applied which i wanted to switch back is 27968010 and then it continued and command uh, came out uh, uh, successfully. To summarize, uh, we understood patching facilities in Exadata Cloud Service. We learned about XRCS quarterly release updates. We seen how we can keep our cloud tooling current. Uh, we also gone through all the steps of patching from list, prerequisite check, applying a patch, as well as rolling back patches. We discussed various log files as well as best practices for patching and using ExaCheck for pre and post system changes. I hope you find this session useful and please subscribe to our channel Oracle Cloud Infrastructure for more updates and thanks for watching and have a good day.